soon-to-be ex-wife, 43, and I, 38, have been separated for almost a year now, but she wants to be friends. Want to move on with my life, but she keeps hounding me to be friends. Obvious, throw away. I need to get this off my chest, as there have been a few times since the separation of where I miss her, but I also remember the times where she caused me hell. There's a lot of lies, deception, and mislead from her that lead me to this point. Not saying that I was perfect husband, as no one is perfect, but it's still exacting the reality of my life. Before my soon-to-be ex-wife got married, let's call her Nicole, we dated for a few months in my early 20s. I was considered her fling from her boyfriend at the time that she was with a break on. We had fun, but her then boyfriend at the time and her decided to get back together. Finding this out, I wished her nothing but the best in life. Moved on with my life at that time and didn't talk to her for almost a year. The fling was February 2006. It ended in mid-March of that same year. Cut to almost a year later, she calls me out of the blue and tells me she wants to meet up and catch up. During that time, I was busy with other things in my life, mainly figuring things out and dealing with other personal issues that were happening at that time. I said, sure. So, Nicole apologized and said that she was sorry for ending things the way they did. I shrugged it off and told her something along the lines of that it was water under the bridge. We started a friendship and remained friends for a long time. As with life, I got busy with uni and started to get settled into my career. Nicole eventually went to have a kid and got married to her first husband. I get into another relationship with a woman, but we keep in contact here and there throughout the years. Seeing each other maybe once every three to five years so or so, or when she was back in town, as she moved to another state at the time. Things ended with the woman and I go back to focus on my career and things that were important to me. However, in June of 2015, she calls me in tears saying that her husband was in a bad hell. She doesn't go into details, but as a friend, I tell her to call me if anything changes. Unfortunately, her husband passes away due to a stroke. Being the loyal friend that I am, I tell her if you need anything, let me know. Nicole goes back to her home state. I go back to living my life. We still keep in contact here and there as work from both of us start to take hold. But we hang out and chat when she's back in town or talk on the phone and catch up with things that are going on in our lives. With the abridged version of the backstory out of the way, this is where we get into the meat of the issue. We thought it was a good idea to give it another shot in 2019. We were at different stages in our lives. We both had deep feelings for each other. And we both felt that the dating market isn't what it used to be. Yes, in hindsight. I was settling. Yes, I get that. I digress. So, we got together and we eloped to Vegas in late 2019. We got married January 2nd, 2020. Yeah, right before we got married, I sat down and went over everything with her. You see, I made a mistake of not living together with her first. She lived in another state, I live in another state. But we were both in the same time zone and less than a day's drive from each other. So I told her what my financial goals were, life plan, what state I wanted to live in, etc. She was on board with everything. I asked her if she was okay with this and she told me yes. And I asked her what her financial books looked like. As I opened up mine, also, she told me, except for a few huge tidbits, oh, I'll get to that in a moment, figured I've known Nicole for almost 20 years, why would she lie to me? Oh boy. Right before COVID hit, I moved up to be with Nicole. We both agreed that I would move up to where she was. We picked the city to move to, and within a few months, we go there. Well, COVID looked at our plans and went, yeah, no. Nicole lost her job and I was in a new city and I was looking for one. I told her that, we've got this, we are a team. If things get low, I can help with what I can with my savings and I'm sure you can tap into your savings if things get low. Yeah, so after landing a gig that paid something, I worked to myself crazy, picking up overtime whenever I could to make sure that my wife and I had food in our stomachs, gas in our cars, and etc. She was able to find a job a few months later and she started telling me that she needed to pay off some credit cards. 
She told me about these credit cards and she told me that there was a small balance on all of them. Nicole told me the balance and I thought, okay, that's not an issue. I can give you something towards it to help you. That's what being a team is all about, helping each other during a crisis. One day, I'm getting ready to head to work and I see her statement balance from one of her credit cards sitting on the kitchen table. To say that my heart sunk is the understatement of the century. One credit card had a statement balance of $10,000. She owed. Not I owe $10,000 on all of my credit cards. One, I started to panic. As rushed downstairs to confront her, I reminded her that she told me that she had X amount to owe. She told me to sit down and told me the truth. It turns out she was $100,000 in debt and she was trying to figure out how to get out of the financial hole her first husband drove her in. Nicole still had student loans she defaulted on, which she started to gain so much interest on. It would take a miracle of winning the lottery to pay off, along with massing up credit card debt that would take at least 10 years of working nonstop to pay off. Feeling angry, I told her that I had to get to work and I left. She called me as I was driving to work and I remember telling her that I felt betrayed that she would hide it from me. She started crying and said that if she told me the truth, he wouldn't have agreed to marry me. I told her without missing a beat. And you're right. During the drive, I told her that we need to put together a game plan. While getting through my scheduled shift, I decided to step up to the plate and take on as much overtime as I could that time, talked to her and said that in order for me to help you, I need to work as much as humanly possible to make sure that I can help to get you out of this. So, I did. I worked for almost a month straight with no days off. Keep in mind, this was during the early days of the pandemic and I needed a cash. All I kept thinking about was, I need to step up and help my family. So I did. One of those things was that I told her that she needed to file for bankruptcy. She started to get mad and told me that she can't because she was trying to buy a house. My jaw hit the floor. I told Nicole, you are $100,000 in debt. Any financial lender is going to look at that unsecured debt and go deny. It's not going to happen. Here's the best plan. Let's take some money, pay off a good chunk of that debt, and get it wiped out. She disagreed with it. I asked her, why? She told me, and I'll never forget this, because that's the down payment for my house. Shaking my head as I typed the sentence. Oh, that was another thing that she was good at. If it was a major purchase, it was hers. If it was something that belonged to me, it was ours. Hilarious. I digress. After working almost a month straight, the hard work paid off. I get a few days off and I'm happy. Wake up in a good mood while her, well, she was upset as she just paid off a bunch of bills and she's broke until next payday. And I remember this conversation like it just happened 5 minutes ago. She was upset that all of the money she made was gone. Well, I was in a good mood. She looked me dead in my eyes and went, must be nice to have no credit card debt and to live like a cheap college student for so many years. I lived like a cheap college student for years as I always maintained a cheap cost of living while making sure that I had at least a 6-month emergency fund saved up. I told her that I will go to the bank and give her some money. This only made her even more upset. She was upset that she had to beg someone for money. I reminded her that we're a team and that she didn't have to beg for me anything. However, the pressure of constantly working, COVID, and finding out more things that she lied to me about started to come to light. The cherry on top was she accused me of cheating on her. Why? Because I was picking up more overtime. Was I talking to another woman? No. I gave her my phone and told her to go through it. She did it. I said, why not, Nicole? Her exact words were, because you probably deleted the messages or have her saved under a man's name. The frustration of real life being locked down and being accused of something I didn't do. Well, it started to take its toll on me. After finally reaching my breaking point, I left my marriage in late May of 2020. There were times where I cried myself in car alone, feeling betrayed, hurt, and lied to over someone that I fell in love with. Someone that I called my wife. After being accused of doing something I didn't do, wanting to do the right thing by helping someone I loved to get out of the hole they were in, 
it was never enough. I was a pawn out of her poor life decisions. That's something that I had to realize and it took a long time to get over that pain. Did we try to make it work for a second time? Yes, I had to forgive her and she had to forgive me. She promised that she would change, but it started to get worse the second time around. She still accused me of cheating on her. She accused me of lying to her about money. I didn't. Nicole accused me of having a mistress while we were separated. I didn't. Eventually, enough was enough. This time, it was permanent. I started to develop headaches, I mean massive migraines, and I started drinking. For your information, I don't drink. Before we got married, I rarely touched the stop. In my college years, I was a heavy drinker, but it started to interfere with my professional life and I had to seek the right help and overcome my demons. I have. I started to notice a change in my behavior. I was crestfallen. I was sinking deeper into an abyss of sorrow and unhappiness. I hated what I was becoming. I knew I had to make a change and quick. In the middle of the night, while she was at work, she worked at a second job at a hotel. I threw my clothes into garbage bags. A dear Nicole letter my ring and left in the middle of the night. That was August 2021. Nicole has tried to make contact with me during that time, but she has been blocked on everything. Social media, phone number, etc. All except email is the only way to get in contact with me. I left a broken man once again. However, all the moment I left, the headaches disappeared. I still felt lost and confused and wondered what was going to happen next. Tears waved over my face once again as I drove back home. Since that time, Nicole has reached out and has asked me many times if we could still be friends. And every time I've said no, and every time I've said no, she asks why and I remind her why. She throws that she's scared of losing me as a friend and descendants. I've lost you as a husband. I don't want to lose you as a friend. That is forever etched in my memory. Now, I've avoided all of her points of contact and the divorce papers are on their way for her to be signed as I want to move on with my life. I don't want to be friends with her nor do I want anything to do with her. I just want to move on with my life and she knows this. Since that time, I've hit the gym again, I've lost close to 20 pounds, started seeing a therapist once again, and I'm healing from this experience. So I ask you, Reddit, with everything that was laid out in front of you, what do I do? Do I continue to listen to her pleas of being friends or don't take the bait? Do I continue to give Nicole the he's man? Comments are appreciated. Too long didn't read. Met soon to be ex-wife over a fling in my early 20s. Didn't work out. Stayed friends during that time. Decided to give it another shot. Turns out I settled. COVID hit. She lied to me about being $100,000 in debt. Guess lied and left marriage. Gave it another shot. Left marriage a second time due to stress. Being depressed and unhappy. And accusations of me cheating on her. Never cheated. Hit the gym again. Lost 20 pounds. She wants to be friends. I don't edit. Meant to put in title. Separate almost a year old together. She and I were separated for most of our marriage as we only spent four months together. The rest of our marriage was being separated. Now for the top comments. Here's a comment from Seeking Best Car. I would get the divorce over and done and then block her entirely. Personally, lying about things like that is a huge thing and this all sounds like quite the disaster. And the constant accusations? fair enough to get to anyone and cause so many issues. I wouldn't want to be friends with someone who hid that knowing it would stop me from marrying them either. You have to do what's best for you in this situation and it doesn't sound like friendship is it. Here's a comment from Bloody Mary HB. She has never been your friend. You were her backup plan all this time. That's why she kept the conduct here and there. You have no intention to keep that road. So move on and never look back. Even your body, more explicitly your health, is telling you to go away as far away as you can. So listen to yourself and be happy with your life again.